Hey, what's up, guys? A professional P.E.K.K.A. player just made a new, more powerful version of P.E.K.K.A. Whenever I play P.E.K.K.A., I get outcycled by Firecracker, Hog Rider decks, or anything with a quick card cycle with Goblin Drill, and it's just a miserable experience. When you drop your first P.E.K.K.A. to counter their initial Hog Rider, they'll cycle back to the Hog Rider before you're back to another P.E.K.K.A., allowing them an opening to get some hammer hits, or be obnoxious and drop a Firecracker to the river and spring some extra damage in your face. But the rank 594 player in the world crafted a P.E.K.K.A. deck with a fast to cycle imaginable. Since this deck has Skeletons, Electro Spirit, and Evolve Zap, you can match the cycle of any Hog Rider spammer. And with Evolve Zap, Royal Ghost, and Void, you can snipe any obnoxious range card. When opponents find out that they can't keep their Firecrackers alive, they'll be livid. I talked to the pro that created the deck, and he said one of the biggest benefits was spamming Evolutions and Voids. It's time to use the cheapest P.E.K.K.A. deck, make our opponents pay the price, and assert dominance. And big P.E.K.K.A. love to everyone that's supporting the channel with Critter Code SirTag. And thanks to Warcraft Rumble for sponsoring today's video. Joining the ranks of the five existing in-game families, the Scenarian family now contains its own leaders and minis to allow you to build armies with new playstyles. Their strategies are best built around flexibility, defense, and healing. The Moonkin alternates between single target and AoE damage. And the Ancient of War is unbelievably adaptable. It can be played at any gold cost, with its stats being adjusted to the amount of gold spent. Earth and Moon serve as two spells in one. And Onu can be played defensively or offensively for maximum versatility. And there's a bunch of new campaign missions featuring the new zone Moonglade, which introduces five new campaign missions. Now is the best time to play in Season 7. There's a solo play event going on right now that allows you to maximize your earning potential so you can upgrade all of your stuff. Download Warcraft Rumble right now using the link in the description of the video or in the pinned comment. And you'll start earning huge army upgrades and collect the new leaders so you can pop off in PvP and PvE. We've got a game against someone with a knight in the banner and no surprise, he cycles a knight in the back first play. Maybe we can make away with this tower like a bandit and steal his clan. So, our strategy right now is to go for a Royal Ghost and an Electro Spirit. Ideally, we're going to be able to stop this damage happening. I don't think the Dark Prince is going to get anything on our tower. And also cycling really... Ooh, wow. That was insane. Are we able to one-shot it with a Void? Oh, my goodness, Wizard. Erasing the existence of our opponent's cards quite quickly. That was awesome. Worked magic against the Dark Prince and then also the Electro Wizard. Showcasing his superiority as a 5 Elixir Wizard. Okay, so we have the Wizard Shield, we have Zap, we have Skeletons. So I think that the bigger benefit of this deck is using the Fast Cycle to your advantage. Like these Skellies probably do really well. Then we can go for an Electric Spirit to reset. Then we can also go in for a Zap afterward if we needed to. I don't think we're going to be able to get it down in time, so I'm not going to. But it is something that's nice to know, you know? If you have Zap and you have a lot of different ways of accommodating your opponent's spam, it's not the end of the world. Also, the Wizard Shield staying alive is crazy cool because now we can throw down with a P.E.K.K.A. Wizard push. And I think we're going to take the tower on the left. I, I just don't see Universe where he defends this. Even with the Dark Prince, my guy, that's just so much elixir. You are deleted! <laughs> it's cool when they take a tower, they think that they're winning, and then the counter push just struts over there, snags the tower, and puts you in a perfect position to snag the second one too. Because they're overspending to defend the P.E.K.K.A. So that's the thing about Goblin Giant Sparky, like, if you don't kill the units and you take the tower, you might just get 3 crowned. And that's a huge problem for these players because they expect to be winning after they take a tower, but when you're playing against Pekka with Electro Spirit, Zap, and Wizard, there's really not much you can do on the counter push. It's definitely gonna kill you. High Life got brought to an all-time low as we're reaching higher to 9,100 in the world. All right, this guy's got the target banner and we have our sights set on the Princess Tower. So first play for us is usually gonna go for Wizard, but in this particular position where we don't have any other anti-air built into our kit, we're not gonna be doing that because we'd throw a fit if we had nothing for the balloon. Finally, we can go and cycle our wizard because we got void and we have ram rider in our hand. So, the balloons, it's not going to be that scary. However, I, you know, I'm going to ram rider because that counters most of it, right? Especially with an electric spirit, we're able to clean up the goblins very quickly. Firecracker is going to die before it gets a hit on our cannoneer. And then, I think I'm just going to zap this for the ram rider to connect. Yeah, nice. The one thing I don't like is I probably have to respond because the cannoneer doesn't do so hot into the guards maybe it does kill him please no guard stab no guard stab no oh man every other tower in the game would have been able to clean up the guard there but you can't say the same about cannoneer into everything else like into an electric giant into someone that is running a giant or a beatdown deck 
it is so much better. So I'm okay getting the bad matchup into bait or graveyard especially, so then I can beat the rest of the games. All right, you know what? I want to go for like a void on top of the tower and also the firecracker because it should kill the firecracker, right? With this, yeah, nice. So cleaned up the firecracker before the ram rider even got its chance to show its strength. And then I think the wizard's going to die, but it's not that big of a deal, right? I think at this point, since we have Evolve Zap, we want to cycle that a little bit more. But do you not realize that the Electro Spirit dies every time? Like, it doesn't even matter that it's under level. No matter what level, if it's a level 16 Electro Spirit, it still gets one shot and clapped by the Cannoneer. So, always fun for us to see that. So, I'm going to Zap on the tower so we can get the Zap Evolution for our next big push. I'm going to slow roll Pekka here. The thing is, about our deck, compared to other decks, you have the capability of pioneering an aggressive offense where you can defend most things with just a wizard, electric spirit, skeletons, and then, I mean, even in this particular position where we're playing against someone with Evo Drill, wizard does so well. Look at this. I'm pretty sure the wizard kills us. Like, with minimal damage taken comparatively. And then we can Evo Zap. I don't, you know, I, I usually don't think this is good, but I don't think it's bad because we got Pekka, we got Ram Rider, we have pretty much everything we would ever want. If we go for a Void, as long as this Pekka breaks through, we win, right? Come on, Pekachu. I believe in you. Oh, that's so disappointing that it didn't do anything. I truly thought it would do something, but I guess not. All right, so we definitely want to go in for a Pekka here so that we can activate King Tower. Oh, it just died. I, I didn't really realize that it would die like that. <laughs> that's kind of crazy. <laughs> the Evolve Firecracker just got incinerated. All right, so we're going to make our Magic Cap in here with a Rare Modder and then also an Electro um, Spam with Electro Wizard counter, basically. Oh, well, I said Electro Wizard, but, you know, we could make our Wizard Electro with a Zap and make it feel special out here. If we avoid and one-shot it, oh my gosh! Dude, this is crude. There's no way, there's no way the Ram Rider is going to be so rude. This is unbelievable. That's going to get a charge. It's definitely getting a charge. And it deleted the Firecracker! Bro is gone. Erased from existence. That is so fun. You don't even need Electro Wizard in this deck. It's better to use the Electro Spirit and Zap because you can controllably get these resets on the Inferno Towers or Inferno Dragons or Mighty Miners. Where if you had Electro Wizard instead of a Wizard, it would never be able to reach the Inferno Tower. Heck, I'm not gonna lie, you don't even need an Electro Reset most of the time when you avoid to delete your opponent's cards every time. After bouncing through with another win in a row, we've pushed up to 7,900 in the world. Time to lock in, guys. We're going to eat this guy up like buttery pancake. I'm going to be dropping our wizard in the back, and hopefully we can extinguish those bats real fast. Definitely don't want to take damage from that. Okay, I have to go zap because the bats are going to be pretty brutal against our ram rider. The cool thing is, Cannoneer is able to comfortably kill that hog rider with the ram rider pretty much every time. So... Having that happen makes me feel good because I get counter push. I force that extra elixir from our dude. And it's pretty funny that we can just watch all of his cards get eviscerated by the Cannoneer without having to wait for the charge up effect that you have to with the Dagger Duchess. We're going to go in for the Void because we need to kill those bats anyway. And I get a third shot off on the tower. That's one of those plays that you'll realize after you play Cannoneer a bit more that you kind of have to respond on, on defense. So a lot more situations that you typically would against bait cards. But it's okay, it's not the end of the world or anything. I'm able to go for a Ram Rider here against the Hog Rider. The Fire Spirit just jumps on our Ram, which is totally okay. And then I am able to defend this with uh, Royal Ghost and Electric Spirit, I think. Or possibly go Wizard and then push back the Mini Packer too. I think that might be better. Actually, yeah, yeah, goodbye. <laughs> It was derpy how it maneuvered its way around to find itself upon the wizard, but I'll take it. I could go Void or I could go Ghost. I think Ghost is slightly better here. It's going to apply more pressure. I do like that more to finish off the Princess and then force out extra Elixir from our guy. I don't want to be overcommitting here with a Void either because it is a nice card to use on offense or defense. Very versatile, if you ask me. Also, I could go for an Evolve Zap here because the Bats did overheal a little bit. Totally fine. Just going to get a nice reset rolling. And then we'll start to go for a P.E.K.K.A. and build up a big push in double Elixir. That's the cool thing again about this deck is like you are able to make bigger pushes and defend comfortably with Skeletons, Electro Spirit, Void, Ram Rider, and double Elixir. You can afford a five Elixir cost card if they spam you. So I I'm not scared even in the slightest here. I'm going to Wizard in the back left as well. And then we can kite units into us using the Skeletons. But the Fire Spirit's dead. Can here cleans the house. Oh my gosh, he's rocking on the Wizard. Homie took the bait. Homie took the bait. Unbelievable. I did not think he would do that to himself. 
All right, so this Electric Spirit is not going to chain on to anything, but it's totally fine. There's no way that he's going to be able to kill this P.E.K.K.A. easily, so... I could just go in for a Ram Rider with the P.E.K.K.A. And then go in for a Royal Ghost on the left-hand side and do dual lane pressure. I like that a little bit more, because we're going to force out a Rocket, which is a pretty bad trade overall. And then we could start to go in for a P.E.K.K.A. as well, again, on the left side. So it's going to be unlikely that he wants to set up a push on the left-hand side into the P.E.K.K.A. Instead, I bet you he's going to try to make something happen with Princess Cycles on the right. But we'll have to wait and see. We're also going to use our Wizard here and then use our Void so then we can clean up the rest of the other cards that might be a threat to the P.E.K.K.A. Then we can get Skeletons down here, go for a Ram Rider, immediately zap on these bats if we're able to. Ooh, no, they stayed alive a lot longer than we wanted, but the Ram Rider might get a bit of a dash or a charge. Didn't happen. A little bit lame, but it's all good. No big deal here. We can easily cycle another P.E.K.K.A. directly on the Hog Rider first. That's the worst thing for our homie to see. Meanwhile, our P.E.K.K.A. is very healthy. Is that all you got? All right, so we're going to get Skeletons here to pull the majority of the bats. We remember, he's going to have rockets. So, bat here, Void, go in for the Ram Rider, and then expect him to try to go for a Mini P.E.K.K.A. So we can Evo Zap on it, and then reset it so it can't kill. So he has to go for a Log, and then it's still problematic for our guy. Awesome position for us, as long as we don't take multiple Hog Rider hits. Also, I'm pretty confident that that's going to be a dead Mini P.E.K.K.A., and then he's not going to be able to finish this off easily with another mini P.E.K.K.A. Because we can just zap it again. He's having to log every single freaking time now. It's insane because of our quick card cycle. We're able to make these things happen. All right, so I bet you goes Hog Rider. So we're going to get a Ghost down. And then we're going to go in for a Ram Rider again. I hope that he doesn't rocket this. I really hope he doesn't rocket this. Ah, oh, he's smart. That's unfortunate. If he didn't rocket that, he would have lost. <laughs> anyway, Princess again. We're going to avoid it. And then we're going to get Skeletons down. We're going to go in for another Ghost. And you guys can see that we're able to keep up pressure while defending because we have the Ram Rider to slow down the Hog Rider, so he can't Hog Rider into us. If he does, it's just dead. It's just gone. It's deleted and yeeted. Now we're able to go for a Void and try to keep up the damage cycle because we want him to go for a random Rocket. We need him to go in for a random Rocket here. All right, we have Skeletons. We have Electro Spirit. That should be dead. Evo Zap. This is it. This is it. One more hit. One more hit. One more hit, Ram Rider. Yes! We got him! As you guys can see, even against super cycle decks like this guy, you're able to keep up. Because the super fast cycle with one and two cost cards, Skeletons, Zap, and Electric Spirit, you can keep up with the fastest decks in the game. I can't lie. Unless you're one of the best P.E.K.K.A. players in the world, you are definitely going to lose that matchup because you'll get outcycled and punished by someone just spamming one cost cards the entire time. So for P.E.K.K.A. to win that type of game, you have to join the dark side. That match exemplifies why Cycle is simply superior. Next one, guys. Let's go. So the strategy for us is to go in for the wizard because we do have Electro Spirit, and I think we'll be able to go and Cycle to avoid with Skeletons and also the Electro Spirit in our hand. So it's really not that bad if he spams rambunctiously in the right-hand side. Oh, he's going to have Sparky. Let's go. We played against this first game, so I think he'll get demoralized when he realizes that he's playing against Void. So, we're going to go and zap on this, and then the wizard's going to kill it. Even if we can't kill with the void, wizard still finesses. <laughs> Isn't that dirty? He has to prioritize protecting the sparky from the void. But then if he does that, then he takes splash damage from the wizard that we cycled. And then he gets reset by the zap or electro spirit. It's just so filthy to have that happen, but I feel like these sparky players deserve it since their deck is so freaking dirty. It is one of the lowest skill decks in the game, just spamming Sparkies in the back, and it's fun. Like, I'm not going to lie, it is very fun to do, but man, you should feel bad about yourself if that's the way that you win every one of your games. Okay, so I'm going to go for Skeletons here. We should be fine against these E-Barbs. I don't think they're that good of a card. Oh, he's got the moves. Wait, yo, chill. Bro, that was disrespectful. You played that incredibly well. I'm actually going to say well played because hitting that prediction spell on us is not easy to do. So, I want to go in for a Ram Rider here, because if you guys remember, he has E-Barbs. He's not going to be able to cycle back to it like a Mini P.E.K.K.A. I think that's good. Pretty sure the Ram Rider trades well enough with the Electro Wizard, so then the Ram Rider gets a connection on the tower. The Electro Wizard just dies. Yeah, it's like, not a bad trade. Even though you're going into Electro Wizard, you might be like, hey, it's a bad trade. But we get damage on the tower, we trade evenly, and we're in a position where our opponent is pressured to come back in the game. What is he going to do? Slow roll a Sparky in the back? I feel like that's not the play into a Wizard and Void. Oh, you know what he's going to do? He's just going to drop a Giant in front of this and try to only need to do a P.E.K.K.A. That's definitely what he's going to do. Right? Yeah? No? No, I guess not. I'm surprised by that. Huh. I, I, thought, I thought he was one with the spam. 
All right, we're just going to go for an Evo Zap here, and then we're going to not waste our Void because it wouldn't work out. We're going to slow roll a P.E.K.K.A. instead, and then we can Void afterward. I think that that will do a lot of damage. The cool thing is, if it just one-shots that, then we, we don't care. Like, we just drop it later. Like, he was trying to make predictions. He was trying to do big plays, but it didn't work out because we knew he was going to go and block it because it's too obvious, right? Don't fall for the stupid plays, guys. Think a little bit ahead, otherwise you'll wind up dead. But now we're going to go for a great zap on top of this Sparky, and then we can go for our Void afterward. And then I think we're in a good spot because I'm pretty confident it doesn't hit the Ram Rider. Yeah, of course it won't. Look at that, guys. <laughs> he lost it! He lost it! How did he lose all of his units on his side of the map again? That is insane. This is so unfair. Okay, his, his Goblin Giant got caught in the snare. I don't even care. This game's over. He might get 3 crown. He actually almost got 3 crown with Electro Wizard directly into the Ram Rider. As you can see, our deck destroys Sparky every time. You pull the plug and you get a very snug win. I'm holding this deck close to my chest because it feels like a national treasure. It's pretty imbalanced in your favor if you ever match into a Bridge Bam deck or a Beatdown deck. They probably have to play 10 times better than you to beat you. We're locked in, and this guy is Rowdy with the Barbarian's Banner, which isn't that scary for me. I feel like if we can evolve our wizard, nothing scares me anymore. Okay, Electro Spirit. Ooh, that was bad. So what I should have done is I should have had the Electro Spirit chain and tank for the Ice Spirit, and then jump back onto the Hog Rider, and I would have been fine, and it would have taken minimal damage. But sometimes when I'm just drinking my water, chilling, vibing, having a good time, and then I look back at the screen, I see a random card in my face. I'm like, oh, that's fun. That's great. It's exactly the way that we like to play Clash Trial, getting spammed at the start before we're ready. It's so uncivilized of you, sir. But you guys let me know down below in the comment section. Does that ever happen to you where you're ready to start the game off in a good way? You've been on a bit of a win streak. You're crushing it. You're killing it. And then you just see someone randomly just drop something at the start and cheese you. Not a great feeling, but we got to do them dirty for that. We got to dig a W here. So I'm going to go and cycle P.E.K.K.A. And I have our Electro Spirit for the Ice Spirit if he wants to do it. There's no way he's going to get a good trade here. We can Void on top of the Firecracker every time. It's Gonzo. It's done. It's done and dusted. And then we get the Void to also hit the Tower again for more value. I can't really build up a big push because I did just waste the Void on top of the Firecracker. But not really a waste. So okay. And maybe, maybe I'm just like telling myself that. But we'll see. I think um, also... If we're able to force out a lot of Elixir on his side of the map, we're just trying to get to later stages of the game anyway. Doesn't really matter that much what happens here. I can go for an Ice or Electro Spirit, depending on what spirit we have in our deck to activate King Tower. Even if the Firecracker gets one shot, then you can still do that, what I just showed you guys. You really, 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 truly want to do that play, because with the King Tower activated, as you see, the Hog Rider doesn't get hits afterwards, so... It's nice and easy and reliable to activate King Tower against Firecracker, even if the Firecracker might die, for the greater good, because you'll preserve more damage in the long run. That one extra elixir, you're not going to miss it, but when they miss out on extra damage that they should be getting, they'll be pretty annoyed. So I can go for a wizard here on top of the Firecracker. Kind of expected that. I knew that. I was just hovering. I was ready. But a void in the other side, if you guys notice how the void is targeting the bomb tower, but it's also going in the other lane, it's important to do that. The reason is... They're dropping cards in the other side that they don't want to be dropping. If they drop it in the same side, they can cycle a knight, and that's horrible for you. I did outplay him pretty hard here. I think I should win the game. We'll have to wait and see, but this is looking really, really good for me. I am going to go and slow roll another P.E.K.K.A. I don't think it's going to break through, so I'm just going to play safer rather than sorry. Don't get overzealous in these type of games either. Like, recognize when you're in a good spot and take it, and don't play too stupid, you know? All right, so he's going to cycle Firecracker. We're going to void on it again, and then we'll just build up another big push, and we'll just do it again. Run it back, baby. Run it back. Resume the attack. All right, so if we can resume this and make this happen, I, I hope that we can go for an Evolved Zap this time on top of the Firecracker because it should be Evolved. Very nice. And then go for this. Should be A-OK -okay with the Electric Spirit and all that. Only one hit. Not bad, not bad. We're going to slow roll another P.E.K.K.A. Generally, you can keep up the cycle with the Hog Rider, unlike most of the matchups where you just lose because you can't keep up with the Hog Rider. This guy's confused. He's like sitting there wondering what the heck I'm doing. He's like, why does this idiot have a cycle deck that he's able to keep up with me? How does that happen? But yeah, he doesn't understand. He doesn't understand the strategy that we have here. So we should be able to go for a great zap on top of the Skellies and also the Firecracker. And I think that the Ram Rider does kill the Firecracker unless I'm super unlucky, which I guess I'm unlucky. Okay, though. We can go and spam some more stuff. We do have Void as well, so this is going to be hard for me to defend. 
gonna drop a wizard here as well, and then just spam more stuff because I think I can win. I think I, I think I just win off this. The Pekka won't get the damage, but pretty good overall. And then yeah, lots of wizard damage. That's awesome. All right, so we're gonna go for Skellies. We're gonna Ram Rider here, and then we can go Royal Ghost. Ram Rider slows down the Hog Rider, and then the Ram Rider probably is able to kill this Firecracker. Then we can go for a Void, and then we can go and spam more stuff. Definitely, definitely, definitely want to go in for a Wizard, and then go and spam more things at the river. I'm expecting him to try to Firecracker me, so we're going to Pekka and we're making that prediction. And then we probably are able to get away with that with a Ram Rider. I like making predictions on opponents like this because you know that they're pretty predictable. Like, if they have done Firecracker at the river every single time, they're probably not going to change their strategy. So... This matchup, again, is like one of the worst matchups in the entire game for P.E.K.K.A. And the fact that I was able to beat it reliably without having even arrows for the Firecracker is awesome. I can't tell you how many games when I'm running P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam that I instantly lose some stupid Hog Rider Cycle where they spam Firecrackers in my face, they drop it at the river, and then I'm like, well, I guess I lost another one. No longer, guys. Switch to this deck and be one of the pettiest people on this planet so you can destroy the annoying Cycle decks that have been beating us for forever. You don't just flip the script, you destroy the entire play and the opponent's day. Slash the like button if you enjoyed today's video, subscribe for more daily content, and have an amazing rest of your day.